So today we're going to kind of talk about the Oscar Varna 350, how it works and what you should be doing with it when it comes to tightening the chain, to sharpening, to operating. So stay with us. So, safety glasses first, right? So today we had a customer drop off Oscar Varna 350. He said it was running a little rough. And could I give it a tune-up and also sharpen the chains? The chain on it. So, the main thing is safety gear, right? This, steel toe boots. And you should be wearing leather gloves around this chain. Because if it's sharp, it will cut you. And when you're not working on the chain, I recommend having a scabbard that you put on the end so that it's, it keeps the teeth from coming in contact with you. So let's just take a quick look. At what we got. All right, so this little button here, probably some of you wonder what it is. It's a decompression. And you push that in when you go to start it. It just makes it so it pulls over easier. And you have less compression when you're pulling. Once it starts, it'll pop back out. All right, we know this is the chain. And we know that this is the bar. So with these, with this mount, and I'm going to tell you right now, every model is different. So you... If you had the 350, this is basically what this video is about, is just the 350. All right, so inside of here, where my finger is, that's a tightening and loosening screw for this. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to check. And if we can lift those teeth up just so that they're, you can see the bottom, of it, it takes a little bit of pressure to get them up there. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. If it's too loose, we're going to loosen these two and adjust it based on that. And what I found is the best bet is to always have your bar tip with pressure up because that's how you're going to be cutting. If you have it when it's just laying there, the minute you tip it up, it will loosen the belt or will loosen the chain rather. This here, chain break. If something comes up, hits here. This is one of the best things, the best feature I think I've seen on all the newer saws back 20, 30 years now. Is when your hand is here, if that comes up, it pushes it forward. And that chain can't move. But when you bring it back, now the chain can move again. Oh, let me get it turned around here. Okay, so this one here is where you put your gas in. And this is where you put your bar oil in. And you always want to do it with the saw laying like this, right on its side, so that you can fill both tanks. Pull a cord. Now with these here, that's the throttle. But with these here, you pull it out to choke it. Pull it a few times until you hear it rumble a little bit. Push that in, and then pull it again, and it will start. Or it should start. And then if you want to shut it off, push down. Again, when you go ready to, get, ready to start it, if you have a decompression button, use a decompression button. It'll make it that much easier to start. Okay, so now I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good zoom on this. But I don't know if you can see that line is etched into that chain. That's actually the directional that you're filing you don't want to file down into the chain itself you want to file this part and it, after so many times that you've sharpened it these are the rakers here that take the sawdust out you may want to just kind of touch them but not too much so when you're sharpening you need to have the right file. See, they come in all different sizes. 
but you want the right size file that fits your saw. And this one here, I'm just going to take so one, two, three, and then I'm going to roll it ahead and go one, two, three. And I'm going to keep doing that all the way through and then vice versa, flipping it around. Now, the only time that I would do something different is if they come in and they ask me, can you sharpen my chain? It's on my chainsaw. The first thing I do is I take it out and put it in a block of wood. If they've hit something, a nail, a stone, what have you, and you guys are going to have those accidents. You know, it's, it's going to run. And it's hard for even an experienced person to bring it back so it's cut and square. So if it's running on you and you've hit something, my suggestion is to take it to someone that, that actually sharpens chains for a living. And a lot of times, a friend of mine that has a bigger shop in town, he's got a great big autom auto automatic one. He just drops it on, punches in what it is, and it just automatically keeps moving the teeth ahead, hits it, moves it ahead, hits it. And I mean, it's just like factory when you get it back. If you haven't hit anything, then just simply three each time and flip it over and go that way with the other. The other thing I recommend is do not use a bar any longer than what you have to. See, that's where most homeowners get into trouble. They think bigger is better. And it's not. The tendency with a 20-inch bar compared to a 16-inch bar is that 20 inch bar, it's only four inches longer. But most people that I know that are homeowners are sticking the tip too far and then it goes into the dirt or into the rocks and it dulls the chain. Whereas if they would have gone with a 16 or a 14 in comparison to the size of the wood, you know, my main train is if you can get on one side, go down through, hop on the other side and come down through and it will cut it completely through. That's a big enough chain. You don't need to get it all in one swipe. And as you get older, like I am, you find that it gets heavy after a while, carrying that around. You know you've worked all day if you're carrying a big saw. If you're going to be doing stuff 12 inches or smaller, you don't need the big saws. You know, drop down a few notches. And my best advice is go to somebody that is experienced in selling these units. And a lot of time it's your local dealer and they can fit you to the saw. And they take into consideration your age, your stamina, your physical, you know, all that stuff goes into it. They're not just gonna try to get you into the biggest saw they have there. You know, the homeowner doesn't need a steel 660. I guarantee you. Would they make more money if they sold you the 660? Yeah, but you'd be pissed and they'd lose money. So. The right dealership is going to try to put you into the right saw depending on what you're doing. So I hope that's kind of helped you today on a little bit with the chain chainsaw and the Husqvarna 350. And we'll catch you on the next one.